it's Tuesday, it's 9.30 and it's my new live blogging spot. Thought I'd try something new, thought we'd try something different. So the plan is that every Tuesday I'm going to come here and I'm going to live blog on a topic. I figured I'm going to be recording videos, I'm going to be doing stuff so why not just go for it and do it live instead. Hi Tina, lovely to have you here. So this week I'm going to be talking about social media, is it worth it and how to make sure that it blinking well is worth it as well. Hi Terry, good to see you here. So the aim is 10-15 minutes, you know it'll probably be a bit longer but the aim is 10-15 minutes and you're just going to get me on a topic and if I've got some time at the end we can maybe answer a few questions and, and see how the session's gone as well. Hi Evelyn, good to see you here as well. So I am going to ask a favour, if you find this really useful, pop me some hearts across the screen, drop me some comments, we know that, that Facebook sees those as great indicators that something is worthwhile and that they should love it as much as you love it. So come and help me get out there and get out and be seen. This is all about stepping up September, remember, and if you don't know what that is, pop over into the group. Oh, that's reminded me, I do need to share this into the group. Oh, let me figure out how I'm going to do that. I'm only on my page right now, that works, doesn't it? It gives us a chance for people to catch up. Um, so let's share this into... It's going to let me... Uh, where am I? I went to page, I went to group. That's the one. So let's go. Post. There we go. I need to get more efficient on that, don't I? I need to be far more better, far better on that and get myself sorted. The things when something's new, it takes a little bit of getting used to. So, um, Terry, but I'm on holiday. How good am I watching you? Wow, I'm impressed, Terry. <laughs> Surely you've got better things to do on your holiday. Hi, Vicky. Lovely to see you. Okay, so just to recap, this is my first ever attempt at live blogging. It's a bit of an experiment. It's a bit about try it and see if it works. I do think that if I'm going to be recording videos on a topic, well, hey, I might as well jump on and do it live and see how it works, see what happens. So, hi Jane, lovely to have you here as well. Thank you so much for turning up and supporting me on my first one. Okay, so, this week, social media, is it worth it? You know my answer there, you know the answer is yes, of course it's a big fat yes. But really what I want to do is I want to dig into how you can make it really worth it. All this art, this live blogging is going to be strange. Okay, so just in case you don't know me, and I'm sure most of you do, I'm Nicola Smith, I'm the founder of a handcrafted business and my mission is to bring you practical and proven advice to help you the, create the success that you want to create. Okay, so hi Evelyn, you've got two boys and you've taken 15 minutes out with a cuppa and they're watching me. <laughs> oh bless, right, okay. Yeah, I've got my cuppa as well. I've got my cool person's mug today. So, right, social media, is it worth it? Yes, of course it blinking is. Okay, I nearly swore then. That's not a good thing to do. Hello. Oh, right. But you need to have found your niche. You need to be talking to the right people on social media. If you're not talking to the right people, then it's going to be complete and utter bust, complete and utter waste of your time. Time. We know that, it's as simple as that, you have to get out there and you have to be talking to your niche, your ideal customer. So first job, before you go anywhere near social media, is making sure that you know exactly who you should be talking to and what you're going to be talking to them about. You need to plan in advance, you need to make sure that you actually know why they buy from you. You need to know the language that they use, so you're talking to them in a way that they understand. Now in an ideal world, you are part of the same set that is your ideal customer, you're part of that group, so you actually have that connection. And if you aren't right now, maybe you have been in the future and you've been there and you've done it and you've got the t-shirt, which is probably why you've started doing what you're doing. That's the best place. If not, take the time to understand and get to know your ideal customer. Okay, so that's tip number one. I should have started with saying there's five tips here. There's five tips for making social media work for you. And that was number one. Um, 
you also need to know when your niche is online this is all part of tip number one there's no point to being on when they're not around now I've yet to learn I've jumped on at this time I picked 9 30 on a Tuesday morning because it works for me Monday doesn't work well for me it's catching up after a weekend it takes time to get your head back into gear Tuesday morning kids off to school sit down first thing jump on sort out my live video it works for me the time may change because I do need to adjust and make sure that I'm on when my audience is on and around okay so a few people I know which is always a good sign so it's a good start but I need to make that adjustment as I go it's a bit of a compromise and the same for you whenever you're posting on your social media if you want to get the most out of what it is that you're doing then even if you can't be on at the same time as your audience schedule the posts so they're going out at the optimum optimal time for you use your page insights have a look have a look at group insights if you've got a group as well all that information is there to tell you when the peak times are so take advantage of those be around be seen when your audience is online there's no point posting at two o'clock in the morning if they're all fast asleep in bed okay so what else have we got i have got notes <laughs> i'm not that great look, i have got my notes so i do need to kind of pay attention to what i'm doing so we are competing to be seen completely competing to be seen there's so much out there but we're not just competing with other businesses and our own competitors we're competing with everyone's family and friends because that's what social media especially facebook is all about it's the squirrel syndrome it's the ooh, 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 constantly going on so you need to make sure that what you're putting out there is great so here tip number two is all about quality not quantity now of course you can step it up you can post as much as you want to and some of the really big brands at the moment are posting up to five times a day which of course is just adding to the congestion in the news feed it's adding to the busyness that's going on so you can do that but if you haven't got something worthwhile to say if you haven't got great images eye-catching images images that look like you that are your look and feel and brand then be careful what you're sharing so optimize your time and make sure you're really putting quality stuff out there you're sharing great articles you're putting out intriguing questions you're making easy questions for people to answer and people like easy don't know if it's quick and easy they're going to respond to it because there's so much else going on they don't really have the time to think so you want very much um, not quite yes or no answers but you do need to be asking questions on your social media you need to be getting out there and you need to get people's attention that's the big thing so maybe a little bit controversial that can always go down well okay you've all gone very quiet on me put me some hearts or some likes on the screen if what i'm saying makes sense to you um i'd love to see a little bit of interaction here okay so actually it's interaction let's ask a question I've just said that it works so let's give it a go so how do you find social media works for you do have you figured out the best times of day for you to be on have you sussed that some kind of images that really grab attention and the others that don't if not you need to be paying attention to this stuff you need to be actually looking through and seeing what is it that works for me what do my audience respond to and do more of what it is that it respond that you respond to i think there were some angry faces that went up the screen then. <laughs> right i had a couple of notes on yellow stickies on my screen i'm going to move them so i can see okay um okay so should we move on to tip number three tip in fact do you know what i think i've merged them all together when i look at this i really need to practice my live blogging skills i need to use my notes instead of just splurge it all out there so the five tips let's just go over them and make sure i have covered them all five top tips for making sure that social media will really really work for you know your niche talk to your niche quite often i'm seeing at the moment people asking completely irrelevant questions for example um let's say evelyn i can see you on at the moment so wedding jewelry and i'm seeing people who make not particularly you evelyn i'm just giving you an example that you would make wedding jewelry but i'm seeing people who if that's their target and that's their niche are actually then talking about business tips and advice and how to get the most from social media and how to um get noticed by your audience well actually your audience who are brides to be if you're in the wedding jewelry business 
aren't interested in how to get more attention on social media. That isn't what they're interested in. What they want to know about is they want to know how they can look good, how they can feel good, how to get the look that they want, the types of jewelry that goes with the dress that they want to wear, ideas for putting their hair up and whatever it is that they can wear in their hair at the same time. They want to be inspired. They want to see those photographs and go, oh yes, that's what I want. That's how I want to look. They want to be printing things off and saving things for their reference file so they remember you and come back to you. So make sure that what you're talking about is actually something that your audience wants to hear and that you're talking to the right people. Something I see creators and makers and crafters do an awful lot is going into groups that are full of other crafters and talking and sharing their products with them. Well actually your fellow crafters might be wonderful people to talk to and have conversations with but they're probably not your ideal customer unless you're selling them yarn or fabric or um, supplies for their business if they are in business or supplies for their hobby otherwise you're not their ideal customer your ideal customer is somebody who needs the product that you make so an example is if I made pens gonna love me my pens if I made pens it would be like me going into a group where other people are making pens and saying, hi guys, what do you think of this? Isn't it great? Do you want one? And actually the response is, well, no, I make my own. What I need to do is I would need to be going into groups and talking to people where people that use pens are. So writers, if it's the type of pen you can draw with, then artists, but who are very, very targeted to that kind of work. So make sure you're talking to the right audience. That really is number one tip. Number two tip is know why you are on social media. And it is essentially the same thing as I've just said, isn't it? It's very much about giving that right message across. It's about knowing that you're there ultimately to inspire and show people about your product. If it was pens, you're inspiring people with how they can use it, with the types of things they can write. You're asking them questions. Do you write in a journal every day? Do you keep a diary? Do you like always having a pen in your bag with you so you can you can always take notes? Or are you a, a mobile phone person? You're asking those questions on social media and it works two ways. It gets the engagement up and it gives you useful, valuable knowledge to take forward in your business. So you understand how your audience use your products. So know why you're there. It's use research, asking those in questions, engaging with people. Social media is engaging and being social. It's the top of your funnel, if you like. I talk about funnels quite a lot in my members club. And it's about meeting people. It's that first no level, getting to know people and giving them a chance to get to know and like you. You don't jump straight in and constantly say, buy my pen, buy my pen, buy this now, it's on a great offer. People are going to run a mile. It's that double glazing man who comes and knocks on your door and you go, oh no, go away. So find that balance. It's research, it's engaging, and of course, making occasional offers too. You do need to mention them. You do need to push people in the right direction so they can find you on your Etsy store or find you on your website. But don't always do that. It's not all about that. And we know that links get the worst reach on Facebook too. So it's about photos, it's about words, and of course, it's about videos. If you can do videos, they are going to fly. And if you can do live videos, even better. Hence the attempt at live blogging. I'll practice, I'll get better. Right, so also using words and images which appeal to, and this is tip number three. So tip number three is listen to the words that they use. Listen to, don't use your words. You will automatically use words that are very, the phrase has gone for me. What's that phrase that I'm looking for, people? You know, there are very technical terms, maybe, or very terms terms that other fellow crafters with your skill and with your talent will fully understand. Your audience isn't in that group. They are not in this area where they've learned the technical terms. They don't know anacronyms. They don't know fancy names. They just want to know at the very simple level. So make sure you're listening and finding the words that they use. Are they... If you're looking at, um, I don't know, selling socks, knitted socks, are they are they bothered if they're cosy and they're comfortable? Are they bothered if they're hard wearing? Those kind of words 
pick up what they are because they are really crucial words for you to be using in your marketing and in your product descriptions as well and in fact everywhere that you're seen and it's also about going into groups and this works on all social media platforms going into groups where people who are influencers in your niche are people who kind of are followed by your audience and seeing what they're putting out the images that are going out and what conversations are happening in there now join in those conversations if you've got something valuable to offer but actually take some time writing the words down looking at the types of images that catch attention it isn't about copying but it's about being inspired and using what's working out there and making it your own so that was tip number three number four said this right at the very beginning be around when they are use your page insights use even Google Analytics and on your website when are your audience around that's when you need to be around or at least even if you're not around in per person it's when you need to be being seen so make sure you're doing a big push at those times if your audience is mums and they like checking in first thing in the morning I don't know half seven as they're kind of just starting to get into the rush for the school run that might be a perfect time to get out there and be seen also half two quarter to three particularly if they're mums who are driving the school run and they like to get up and they like to park early and then while they sat there what are they doing they're scrolling through Facebook they're scrolling through their social media so pick out the optimum times for your ideal customer you have to know your customer and the last one is be relevant there's no point asking questions or talking to people there's going to be the odd time there is going to be the odd occasion where you go off piste where you go and have a conversation and it works and it gets people's attention that's completely nothing to do with what you're doing the one of the best posts I ever put on my Facebook page for engagement was describe your word in your day in one word and actually the amount of responses I think I kind of like end up with nearly 300 responses or something silly on that one post and it was completely off tangent it was nothing to do with it but it worked because it got the engagement so the odd ones worth it but 80% of the time use that Pareto principle 80% of the time be on topic for your audience okay so any questions I've not sent do I need to scroll haha <laughs> there's engagement I needed to scroll there you go right so hi Debbie lovely to see you here hi Jane hi Penny lovely to see you um, Jane Terry's asked whose teacher's pet I'm wondering why what did I miss I missed something there um, Terry put Tuesday morning is never good for me I'm sorry I can't be perfect for everybody um, Leisha hello lovely to see you here hi Alison hi Vicky you missed the beginning don't panic I was really just introducing what it was that I was going to do Alison you put I post when I have time not when I think it's a good time to post see now that is crucial have a look and see if you can figure out when is the better time and try experimenting with different times as well because you may find that actually even though you're posting when you have time to post it may be that you're better scheduling at that at that moment instead of just posting it live try and mix see how it goes as I'm doing with this live blogging which I think I obviously need to practice at um, it needs testing you don't know till you try it so yeah give it a go Vicky you put I post randomly or schedule occasionally okay so again it's not about posting necessarily different content but look at your page insights because it might be that when you're posting isn't when your audience is there we are competing on a really really busy news feed we're competing on a news feed that actually doesn't really want us to be seen okay it's hard but you've got to understand it from Facebook's perspective from Facebook's perspective they want this place to be about friends and family they want it to be about engaging they want people to be seeing the content they want to see on their newsfeed and the way they measure that is by a person's engagement so the fact that you're engaging here and now on this video suggests to Facebook that you like watching videos that you like seeing what I'm doing so tomorrow you might see a little bit more from me fingers crossed that's the way it works and that is what you want from your audience as well so if you're posting at a time where they're on and you're going to show up in their news feed because they've engaged with you recently that's what you want you want to optimize that time you want to make you want to work with Facebook not against them so by working with them it's finding the best times for your audience and the more you know your audience the easier that is um, 
Jane, you put early morning and around 9 p.m. for me. Also, a lot of my niche are up in the middle of the night feeding their babies. Brilliant. So in which case, make sure that you're putting a few posts out in the middle of the night and allude to the fact of, how's the midnight feed going? I bet you're ready to go to bed. Have those honest conversations with them because if they see them and they start engaging with them, they'll start connecting. You don't have to be there. It's about having somebody comment for the first time on that post and then you can go back when you're online and you can put that comment and reply on. You do need to be going back and talking to people. This is about building relationships and getting through the no like trust. Michelle, you put usually, usually mornings work for me or they did before I moved currently <laughs> on packing boxes. Brilliant. Is that mornings work for you or mornings work for your, your audience though? It, is mornings the best time for you to get on to do some scheduling? I actually find at the moment, I'm breaking my own rule at the moment because I am stepping up in September, which means I'm putting myself out there an awful lot more and I hope you're joining me with the stepping up. It doesn't have to be being how you are on social. It could be to do with anything. Pop over into the community group and have a look and join in. Um, but because I'm stepping up more, I'm posting more. But I actually really did find that when I was only posting once, twice, sometimes three times a week, my... Those posts were getting far higher reach, probably because they were quality posts, they were thought about a little bit more, and also because Facebook likes to kind of go, oh, you're back, we want to remind you that this is a great place, that so you're being seen by people, because then you might go on and advert pay for adverts with us. So it kind of had that knock-on effect. So if you find you're not getting much reach, do the opposite and step back a bit. Big businesses are posting up to five times a day at the moment because they have great content they can put out there five times a day. They have people working in teams the whole time just to figure out what to put onto social media. So if you can get out there and post a lot, yes, you're going to get a bigger reach, but you're going to get smaller reach, but all adds up to a bigger, bigger total. If you're struggling with social media, back off and do two or three times a week on your page. Make sure it's good. Make sure it's posted at times that your audience is on and that it's eye-catching and it's asking great questions. And see if those individual posts get a higher reach. Now, obviously, overall, you're going to be reaching less people because you're putting less posts out so the numbers aren't adding up. But if, as a, if you were doing one post a day, two posts a day, and you're reaching... 50 people each time so 100 people a day five days a week 500 people but if you can put out one post every two days and reach 300 people with a post that could be 600 people so it might actually work out for you test it and try it if it doesn't work for you go back to the way you were doing it before you haven't lost anything but if it's improved for you then hey you're not having to struggle with what to post on so often you're thinking about it a little bit more and you're being far more structured and strategic in the way that you're using social media. Which is really what it's about because if you're not careful, you'll lose so much time on social media. You just It just disappears in the blink of an eye. I've been on here now for 25 minutes when I was aiming for 15 and it's exactly like that. Your time will just disappear in a flash. So the less you post, the less you need to be on, the more time you have to be making and doing all your other marketing as well. It's a win-win if it works for you, but you've got to test it to try it. Okay, um, so if you put in the evening about seven to eight, I tend to find I reach more people and more people interact as I guess it's prime time after people home from work, kids in beds and scrolled through Facebook, or maybe that's just me. That's your audience and it's perfect. Make the most of it. So you should be putting out there at seven to eight p.m. You should be putting out your best images, individual images, not the montages, not the multiple ones, putting out there your best image and putting out something really strong as a comment and asking a question so you're getting that engagement, particularly if it's engagement that then enables you to reply to the comment with something that can lead people to your website or tell people about an offer as well. Be really strategic about what it is that you're posting. Make the most of it. Okay, one thing with Facebook, I do need to mention this, I will be wrapping up very soon, but one thing with this is that if it looks like an advert, Facebook wants you to pay for it. It's a great rule to follow. If it looks like an advert, if it's saying buy this now, if it's mentioning how much it is, if it looks like it is a pure and simple advert, reword, rework it because Facebook will limit your reach. 
Facebook wants you to pay for adverts. They don't want you to pay for engagement. Well, maybe they do, but they give us engagement. That's what they're giving us. They're giving us the opportunity to be seen by people and to engage with people. And if that is a popular post, if people are commenting and talking, they will love it and they will share it more for you. That's Facebook will share it more for you. But if it's very much advert ba based of come and buy this now link, that's what you want to be posting. They want you paying for it. It's a great little simple rule and a simple trick. Okay. If it looks like an advert, if it reads like an advert, don't bother with an organic post. Okay. Um, the shower you put between eight and nine is also good too. It can be because people, but what you have to remember at eight and nine is people are probably also sat on their sofa. Your it's TV time, film time, and they're on social media. So you have to have really, really strong quality stuff going out that is eye catching. It's a great question. It's easy to answer. It it's entertaining. It's got to be something that makes them want to connect with you. Um, Evelyn, you put my audience varies as to when they look at social media adverts and boosts are great as I can target. Brilliant. Yeah, I'm not mentioning adverts deliberately here today. But yeah, if you really do want to get the most from Facebook, then advertising is a great way to go. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Helen. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Wemmy. Lovely to see you all. Um, Jenny, hello. Um, Tanya, you put I post between 7 and 7.45 a.m. on week weekdays weekends are a bit more random yeah week, weekends do tend to be more random and it does take testing and finding out right that's it so very quickly just to wrap up tip one know your audience tip two know why you're on social media and stick to that 80 percent of the time use words and images which appeal to your audience that means taking your time to get to know them four be around when they are around that is essential and eye-opening to do because they will start commenting more because you're if little by little the snowball grows they will see more of you and number five be relevant don't go off topic don't try and teach them about something that's completely and utterly random stay on topic for what your audience need to know to know about their problems the solutions that you bring to them that's what they want to know if you make and knit woolly hats talk about being cold talk about the weather that's coming in and how lovely the summer's been but how you enjoy the cold and as long as you've got a nice woolly warm hat it's great to get out there and walk the dog and do all the things that you do when you need a woolly hat stay on topic be relevant right that is it for today um, i am quickly going to mention that my members club is closing the doors are closing on the 10th of september so if you're tempted if you want personal one-to-one -one attention from me on your business it's the place to be but you only have till the 10th of september to join all members it will be business as usual in fact it will be business better than usual because i'm slowly integrating all my fabulous ideas i say so myself they are fabulous um ideas and the new website will be coming into place i'm hoping that as soon as that's done i will reopen the doors for a little while but i have no idea when that's going to be i know what i'm aiming for but it could be next year. So if you're thinking about it, don't hang around. Now is the time to join. And actually, annual membership has a fantastic offer on right now, which strangely enough finishes on the 10th of September. Coincidence that. Okay, so <laughs> hopefully I'd love to see you there. If not, I'll be back here next Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. And in between then, I'm gonna practice my live blogging. It's been lovely to see you. Keep creating. I will speak to you very, very soon.